do you find that you often have a really good idea, maybe like a cool drum loop or a really nice bass idea, but you struggle to turn this loop into a full song with a lot of variety, interest and structure? If you do struggle with that, don't worry, you're absolutely not alone and almost all musicians and producers struggle with the same thing. We have hundreds of cool loops, cool ideas, and we can sometimes struggle to turn them into songs. The good thing is there's loads of practical things you can do to help turn this loop into a song and I'm going to be sharing three of them with you in this video. The first one is all about arranging your song so that it can have structure, variety and interest. The second one is about how to play along with your song, jam along with it whether you're by yourself or with friends so that you can add sort of creative musical parts to your song and keep it interesting. And the third part is all about how to mix, refine and organize your project as you go so that you stay motivated to work on it. I'm Michael and today I'm going to be sharing these three strategies with you. They're all a little bit interwoven, but don't worry because I'm going to keep it straightforward and simple. So let's get right into it. So this is my project inside FL Studio. This is where I've left it. I only have a bass and a drum loop. So the drums sound like this. Really simple. The bass is like this. And together they sound like this. It sounds okay, but it's certainly not a song. A song is a story, a journey. It takes you from the start to the end. This is just one kind of feeling or one emotion locked into a loop. The first thing that you can do to get a loop into more of a song format is to actually just structure it like a song. So I'm gonna take this and I don't really think this is how I sh my song should start. So I'm gonna place this further over and this is gonna be part of my chorus. So I'm just gonna drop it over here. You can see that these columns are uh, sort of distinguished into light sections and dark sections. These mark out each four bars. So I'm just going to drop it over here into one of the light ones and that's going to be the start of my chorus and I'm actually going to label that. So I'm just going to select that area, press Alt and T. I'm going to name it Chorus 1. Now what I'm going to do is add a verse before this. Now verses are typically 8 to 16 bars long. So in this case it's 4, 8, 12, 16. So my verse is going to start just here. I'm just going to select that verse. Before that verse, I might just have a little introduction here. Then I'm gonna have my chorus last for eight bars long, which would just be copying and pasting that to there. Then I'm gonna have my verse start again just after here. There are loads of different ways to structure a song, but it's very common to get sort of a four to eight bar intro, eight to 16 bar verse, eight bar chorus, then a verse, then a chorus again. Sometimes there's chorus, bridge, then chorus. Sometimes before each chorus you have a pre-chorus or, or there's some kind of hook. Study the genre that you're producing in. See if you want to fit into the way that other people are, are structuring their songs. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. But having a structure to work with lets you know which pieces you still have to fit in. So let's work on the extra pieces now. So we've got a great big blank verse. How do we fill out the verse using what we have here? Because I don't want my bass line and my drums uh, knocking away throughout the whole verse. That's not the kind of idea I have. I would like a little bit more variety, which is the first point I mentioned in the arrangement. The arrangement needs variety. It needs dynamic and contrast between loud and quiet. If my verse starts like this, then my chorus is never going to hit hard when that comes in. If you know music theory, this will be simple. You want to elaborate on this bass line using chords. But if you don't know music theory, don't worry. I'll show you exactly how to get the chords out of this bass line. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the piano roll for the bass line, Control A, Control C to copy the root notes of this bass line. These are going to be the root notes of the chords that we create. Now I'm going to load open an instrument, so I'm going to use a piano to start off with. I'm using addictive keys because it's a piano that I know and trust. I'm going to create a new pattern and call it chords. I'm just going to make it four bars long and paint them across throughout the verse there. I'm going to press F7 to open the piano roll and I'm going to start creating my chords. So I'm just going to start by pressing Ctrl and V to paste in those root notes of the chords. From here you'll want to make sure that you know the key of your song. You may already know the key from when you started, but if you don't know the key and you don't know music theory, just head to a site that helps you figure out the key based on the notes. Input your notes, it'll tell you what key, and then what you can do is click down here, go helpers, scale highlighting, and highlight the key of your song, in this case C major. What I want to do is use this root note to create a chord but if you don't know how to do this uh, there's a straightforward way here which you can use when you're starting out which is uh, th this is a D note so what I'm going to do is click up here 
and I'm going to select a major or a minor chord, depending on which one you want. Let's say I want a minor chord. Click on that D note, and then it fills in the chord for you. The next one, I might want it to be a major chord, so I'm just going to hit the F. And then G, I'm just going to finish it on a major as well. So those are the most basic versions of the chords. Now I would recommend elaborating on these. You can see from the scale highlighting which notes are in my key. So if I want to elaborate on these chords or voice them differently, I can sort of rearrange the notes in the chords and find some more exciting or interesting ones. But for now, we just want to keep the momentum going. I don't really like that piano, so I'm going to swap it out for an instrument that sounds a little bit more interesting. So I ended up finding this uh, looping piano inside a, a pulse engine called Signal that I like. So I'm just going to be playing the chords using that instead of the piano. And it sounds like this. So it's given us sort of like a sense of rhythm. So now what I'm going to do is go to that third point, which is about refining, organizing, and, and just cleaning up your project as you go. So I'm just going to quickly rename this piano at the side, give it the color of blue. Then I'm going to right click, auto name clips. The next thing I'm going to do is send it to the mixer. So in this case, insert seven, control and L. The piano will be sent there now. So what I want is a contrast between this piano and this bass. When this bass kicks in, I want that to actually feel huge. So in order for that to feel big, I need a dynamic change. I need the piano to be uh, quieter. So I'm just gonna lower this down a little bit. Now, not too much, but when that change happens, I want it to be quite drastic. And right now it just sounds like two parts of two completely different songs. There's no journey transitioning us into that chorus. And we'll work on that in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm just going to copy over this piano into the second verse, at least for 16 bars. It might only end up being eight. And what I'm also going to do is copy this chorus over after 16, pop it over there, Alt T, and then I'm going to call it chorus two. And this way we already have a little bit of a structure going. So we can see our verses, we can see the choruses, and we know that we need to add some more in. What I'm gonna to do to add a little bit to that journey is to give myself a bit of an introduction. So instead of my song just starting with, just straight in with the chord, I'm gonna load an audio recorder onto the master. I have just the regular piano playing now, and I'm just gonna record the first chord. Okay, cool. Now what I'm gonna do is reverse it. So Alt and the left arrow key to reverse it. Now I'm gonna press Control and R to add some reverb to this. So now what I'm gonna do is just drag this onto the playlist like so. I'm going to reverse it into the first chord. I'm just gonna reverse. So now I'm also gonna rename it to reverse chord, something like that. Give it a color, so I'm just gonna green, uh, auto name clips. I'm also gonna send this somewhere on the mixer. So let's hear what we have at the start now. It should be a little bit more flowy, uh, getting us ready for that journey, I suppose. Now what I'm also going to do is add a riser before that chorus, just to kind of throw us into that chorus a little bit better. So I have this one riser that I like. It's quite short. I might want to pick a longer one, but I'm just going to reverse it into this chorus here, chop off the end, and we're left with something like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is actually cut it off a little bit early. So I'm going to just cut it off right here, and I'm also going to cut off this chord just there. Okay, so it needs a little bit of refinement. Now what I'm going to do is cut off all that volume on the piano. So I'm going to go into the piano on the mixer. I'm going to automate the fader just here, and I'm just going to simply drag that down. That should help that kind of pull away and then sort of slam into the chorus, I suppose. Now what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to group this with the above track, right clicking and pressing G. And then I'm also going to auto color that group. I'm just going to call this volume, auto name that clip. Now everything's staying organized. I'm 
also going to add a riser halfway through the chorus and one just at the end of the chorus sort of slingshotting out into the next verse. Another thing that I'm doing as I'm going is sort of setting levels and sort of mixing everything in together a little bit. The better it can sound, the more motivated you will be to keep working on it. And if you open it up next time, it's not going to sound like quite so much of a, a mess of ideas. It might sound a little bit more structured, a little bit more balanced. Now, the next thing I'd recommend doing is layering a little bit. So the piano here, what I've decided to do is layer it with another instrument. So I've just copied the MIDI across to another instrument. It sounds like this on its own. It's a lot more exciting and interesting than just that standard piano we had. Now together, it's a lot more interesting, I suppose. It just feels more like a song. At this point, I'm going to leave the verse as it is. The direction of the verse will probably be heavily dictated by what vocal goes on it. Their vocal tone might dictate what instruments you want to put in there. If you have a pre-chorus, that's where you're going to want to start increasing the energy. You might want to introduce the drums, more risers, more fallers, that kind of thing. Now we're going to go back to the chorus and try to make this just a little bit more exciting and interesting. So the easy thing to look at is the drums, because right now it's just a kick and a snare. going to do is add in a shaker to this or like a hi-hat and what I'm going to do is insert a track here. I'm going to create a new pattern by pressing F4 and I'm just going to call it shaker. I'm going to paint it in at the second half of the drop. I'm going to group this with the above track, auto color the group, call it shaker, then I'm going to auto name the clips. There we go so they're all colored. I'm just going to paint these across here. This would be a lot easier if I had my Akai fire here but unfortunately it's still in storage from traveling and uh, it's going to sound like this. And I'm telling you setting those velocities using fire is a lot quicker than clicking away like this. So I'm just going to do that just for now and what this does is gives quite a contrast between the first half and the second half of the chorus. It's simple, but again, it sounds a little bit more like a song because we're getting that aspect of variety and, and journey. It's actually traveling through lots of different sounds. The next step involves actually playing along, jamming along with your song, because right now this isn't that musical. I've got basic chords, basic bass line, basic drums. There's nothing that sounds that authentic or original to me in the song yet. So what I'm going to do is play on MIDI keyboard. Now, it doesn't matter whether you have a MIDI keyboard, a small controller or whatever. Just try and play along with it. Maybe you play guitar. In that case, you can grab a guitar and start riffing along. But I would highly recommend getting hands on with the music. It will help you connect with it. It will help you write and, and come up with something creative and beautiful. What I like to do is play on instruments that are easy and fluid to play on. One for me is this sort of brassy analog pad. And for me, for some reason, when I use that on the keys, it makes things a little bit easier for me. I'm not a natural keys player. I play guitar and I play it pretty badly. But when I play this on keys, it just sort of feels quite inspiring to me. I don't know. Everybody's going to have a different sound. Some people would prefer just a piano or some kind of harsh lead. So what I do is I play this pad. It's one I trust, even though it won't necessarily match this bass and these drums. I play along the chords. Now, if you don't know how to play along the chords, just see them in the piano roll and literally just, just play them one at a time until you actually figure out how to play them. Once you memorize the shapes and which notes you can and can't hit, it's just gonna make life a lot easier for you and I'd recommend just giving it a go. So let's try and see if we can come up with something a little bit more interesting. Just the basic chords. So once you can play around the basic chords, try adding in an extra note at a time, and this will help you develop melody. Now, this really is for beginners. If you're a keys player, just ignore this and skip to the next section. But if you play a chord, try adding in another note that works one at a time. You'll figure out which ones do and don't work. If you hit a wrong note, it's going to sound off like that. So experiment playing around like that and that will give you the basis of a melody. It, it's one of these things where it's going to sound silly at first and the more you do it, the, the better it gets.
and don't worry if you hit the wrong chord like that, you know, you'll find a way to make it work. It's very easy to hear when you play a note that's that's wrong or off, it's just going to sound dissonant and, and wrong. So don't be afraid of trying something out, and a melody might come out of this. For instance, if I head to a higher octave, maybe a, a lead might come out of this. Yeah, like that. And whatever you come up with, you'll know that it was you and it feels like you, it's got your signature to it, the way you play will be embedded into that MIDI information and it's gonna not feel quite so plastic and, and quite so fake, I suppose. So I'm just gonna create a new pattern, call it Melody and I'm just gonna play along and see what happens. This might be a bit rubbish, no one really comes up with a good melody the first time around anyway, but let's try. So let's see how that sounded. So again, I'm just going to name it Melody, I'm going to give it a colour, and auto name clips, and I'm going to make sure that it's sent to the mixer here as well. And again, I'm going to try and blend that in. Now going into the second verse, what we might want to do is keep the energy high, so keep the drums going as well, but what I'm going to do is insert a track here, uh, right click and I, and then I'm going to go to my drum bus, which I have an EQ loaded on, and I'm just going to filter the drums down so that in the verse, I'm getting that kind of vibe out of it. So I'm just simply going to create an automation clip for this. So I'm going to keep it down during the chorus, and then as soon as the verse comes in, we're going to have that kind of filtered energy. Might be a little bit too much. Often in songs, when the first chorus finishes, you want to keep a little bit of energy going. It might be that there's sort of a subdued bass line or the drums carry through. Often you'll want a faller to match the riser. So I'm just going to make the riser unique. I'm going to reverse it and we'll play it into itself like this. So there's a bit of a fall off. And this one I'd probably want to extend out and make it a lot longer. Again, I'm just naming everything and keeping it all organized. Something that I also have is another instrument here, which is uh, on analog strings, which I love. What I have is this reverb sort of ping that sounds like this, which I'm going to use to add a lot of texture underneath the chorus. So I'm just simply going to print out that, that D note, which is the root note of the first chord. I'm just going to have it play through the whole chorus. I'm just going to drag that straight into the playlist here and I'm going to just add it in here. I'm going to add another one as well, so I'm just going to make it unique and reverse it into itself so that it comes just there and then another one to match it. That kind of gives it a lot of texture underneath the track. So now I want to just quickly recap what we have done. And what we've done is we've taken a fairly simple loop that just had the drums and the bass line, and we've arranged it and given it structure. It, it visibly looks like more of a song now. The verse is a bit thin, but we have given it contrast, some variety, and definitely given a journey throughout the song. We've sectioned off an intro verse, chorus verse and a chorus. Now we might want another bridge and another chorus. Every song is going to be a little bit different, so don't worry about being locked into that grid. We've provided contrast by having quiet elements, loud elements, giving it dynamics. Something you can do, you know, if you want a really wide drop, sometimes the best thing to do is to make the verse more thin. I could have this piano and pad be really thin in mono, and then when the chorus hits, 
it's going to feel a lot wider because they haven't been used to that wide stereo sound. The next thing we did was try to play the instrument so that we could sort of fill this out with something that felt a little bit more normal and natural. You know, maybe play the chords in on a piano or a guitar so that it has an, an element of you, your, your energy and your spirit in the music as well. Didn't necessarily work today, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Sometimes the best melody doesn't just come to you on the spot. And the third thing we did was refine and mix the song as we go. So most of this, besides maybe this, looks good, makes sense, hasn't taken too long, and it means that when I leave this song and come back to it, this is going to make an awful lot more sense. It's organized, it's clean, it's sort of mixed already. So, you know, if I'm away from the studio, maybe I'm traveling or I'm on a walk, or maybe I'm working on a different song in the studio, and then a really cool melody idea comes to me, I can jump straight into this project, put the melody idea in, there's no clutter and mess. The other benefit of keeping it organized is that I feel proud of this song. It doesn't necessarily sound amazing yet, but I feel a lot more proud of it uh, than if it was just a load of gray and a mess. I, I feel that this is something I want to come back to and work on. And one thing that I would stress to you is to not hang around too long on ideas that aren't working. The melody for me wasn't really working out great today. I'm not gonna spend half an hour, 45 minutes trying to make my fingers play something awesome. If it's not happening, it's not happening. Give it a break, come back to it, and when it does work, you'll know about it. So don't worry about that at all. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that this helps you uh, sort of turn your loops into a little bit more of a song structure. If you do have any comments, criticisms, questions, please do leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.